Oh man, I think I got a piece of paper. But don't worry about it. This mine pairs perfect with the Subway wrapper. Hey, I'm Samoye Andre Mack, and today we're gonna look at 11 different fast food meals, and I'm gonna show you how to pair wine with each of them. It doesn't really matter if you're having a steak dinner or you're having a double quarter pounder with cheese. Ultimately, the goal is picking the right wine to go with the right food. Pairing wine with fast food? I think it's fun. I think it's a contrast of high and low. And, you know, who doesn't like a cheeseburger? Wine in my opinion, belong on your table next to the salt and pepper shaker. It's a condiment. When you think about wine pairing, there's two different kind of ways. You can match like flavors with like, or you can match two opposite flavors. It's really kind of a personal taste. It doesn't matter what kind of food you're having. You wanna have the perfect wine to go with it so that the first bite tastes as good as the last bite. So first up we have McDonald's. We have a double quarter pounder with fries. Oh, look at that. This is bringing me back to my youth. So let's look at the burger first. I'm thinking toasty, there's onions. So thinking like more pungent, strong flavors. Pickles for acid, cheese. So right off the bat, I'm looking at all these things. And for me, my mind goes to what's a hamburger? Hamburger is just chopped steak, right? So I'm thinking Brunello di Montalcino, Italian steak wine, completing the perfect Happy Meal here. It is located in Tuscany, Italy. Brunello is actually made from the Sangiovese grape. Sangiovese is pretty tannic. You're looking at something to really kind of help break down the solids in the beef. So you want to look for something that's really, really kind of stringent and tannin, and this wine works perfectly. So raspberry, tart cranberry, cherries, freshly paved road. That's a good thing. I think a bad choice for something like this is going something like all the way sweet or something very high in alcohol. I, I would probably stay away from port. These are just rules. I wouldn't limit yourself to just those rules. All right, so now we're done with the burger. We're gonna move on to the fries. I love the contrast between sweet and salty. So I'm gonna do a little bit of Riesling here. Riesling is a grape generally grown in Germany. This is Cabernet, so this is kind of the entry level. Just a kiss of sweetness to kind of help subdue the saltiness of the fries. There's six different levels when you're thinking about German Riesling that have to do with sugar, the amount of sugar that's left in the wine. Cabernet, which we have here, is kind of the entry level. So it just has a little bit of sugar, a kiss of sugar. Telltale sign of Riesling is Petro or Kerosene, so it slightly smells like you're standing at the gas station. Kerosene is definitely not bad. This is a great thing. Just kind of a byproduct of the grape. And then it smells like a little bit of tangerine. Get like a little bit of ginger. Oh, that's beautiful. You have a little bit of this acid to kind of foil the saltiness, and you have the sweetness to kind of lift everything up. It's not cloyingly or extra sweet. To me, it kind of elevates the experience of having a McDonald's french fry. All right, so we're at Taco Bell now, and I've been told this is a crunch wrap supreme. I've never had one of these before in my life. I've only seen it on television. I'm not a fan of hot lettuce. I definitely taste meat, I taste cheese, with some tomato, cumin, and chili. It tastes like a, a hard shell taco that's been wrapped in a tortilla. And then there's some tacos here. Well, it just brings me back to my college dorm room. It's the richness of the meat, kind of fatty. The lettuce here is cold, so it's kind of refreshing. I grew up in San Antonio, Texas, and you know, Tex-Mex and Mexican food were very prevalent. And when I got into wine, that was always a thing that trying to figure out where to go. And for me, I've always liked to go to this region called Alsace in France. So they make these bold, rich style white wines, really kind of hold up to big, rich dishes. They're low in alcohol, and they have a slight bit of sweetness to kind of ward off the spiciness of the dish. Spiciness in high alcohol wine, it just accentuates the alcohol. So it just basically makes your mouth on fire. But ultimately what we're looking for is a rich style white wine with lower in alcohol that has some acidity to it. Getting pears, peaches, little lilacs. It almost smells a little waxy. Wow, that's good. There's lots of different flavors here, but mainly what I'm focusing in is, is basically the meat that's in the tacos and the spices and the flavors. That's why we wanted to choose something that was a little bit neutral in that aspect of alcohol. I think for most people in wine or for this particular practice, zeroing in on the protein seems the easiest way to be able to do it. And if it gives you the thing that you can focus on, this is definitely a classic. Next up, KFC, Kentucky Fried Chicken. Flavor-wise, you know, the saltiness of the skin, the spices there, kind of really rich chicken flavor. Uh, it smells so good. It's like a, is that like celery salt? So, you know, I mean, here you can go several different ways, but for me, I want to do sparkling, but I wanted to do something a little bit different. So here I'm thinking we're going to do a little bit of Pet Nat. So Pet Nat is any type of sparkling wine that's made in the ancient traditional method. There's no secondary fermentation. It's all the trap gas and it's fermented in the bottle. And so it kind of gives this kind of really light kind of carbonation. That's really kind of great with chicken. So you can just pop it off. That looks really fun. It smells almost like, um, I don't get many mud baths, but like being in a mud bath, so there's this a little bit of kind of 
earthiness to it, earth tones to it, cranberry, cherry, strawberry. You get lots of strawberry here. For me, bubbles work more as a scrubbing agent to kind of help cleanse your palate. And then also I wanted to show that like they're sparkling red and that you that you just don't have to have white wine with something like this. The red wine flavors really seem to kind of really mimic and enhance the flavors of the seasoning that's on the chicken. And when I think about chicken, chicken skin is pretty salty and I wanted to have something that had some acid to it. I think this is a fun way to be able to do it. Pet Nat is fun, it's accessible, and so is Kentucky Fried Chicken. Ah. Uh, Popeyes. This is their uh, spicy chicken sandwich. There's a textural thing going on here that's different than say something like the previous chicken that we had before. It's got pickles on it to give a little bit of acid. I think there's a little bit of hot sauce or something on there. The real kind of flavor is coming from the sauce. So for me here, I would actually choose Riesling. Again, I know we've done that before, but I think this is a little variation of it. And this is called Spate Lizard. So this is the next level up. So this wine is gonna be a little bit more sweet. It's gonna have a little bit more texture to it. So we want a low alcohol wine here, and then we want a little bit of sweet here. So it smells like uh, slightly a little bit like cotton candy, a little bit of quince, kerosene in the background. Wow, oh, this is beautiful. This is so good. It's definitely uh, a little bit more sweet uh, to kind of combat the heat. This is a fun pairing. I've done it before. For a lot of people, it may not be relatable, but I think what's really cool is like you understand a Popeye sandwich. You've heard of it before. Uh, maybe this thing you haven't, but maybe this will give you the chance or kind of push you over the edge to say, hey, maybe I should try these things together. So we're at Wendy's. Uh, this is a beef and bean chili baked potato with cheese and a little bit of sour cream. I'm from the school of like, if it has beans in it, then it's not really chili, but to each his own. So I've never had this before, but I think for me and a person in my position, this is where all the fun comes in, right? Just like something you never had and then choosing something based on the flavors that you see and from, your taste palette memory. So I've had a baked potato before, I understand what that is. Starchy, crispy skin on the outside, which I love to eat. And when I look at like chili, you know, I'm thinking of like fatty, rich, savory. Cheese kind of adds a little bit of kind of a textural thing. I think for me, I would want something that had some nuance to it, but also had some umph to it, some strength. You know, I guess like the best word to, to describe it is uh, a wine that had structure to it. Lo-fi Malbec. So in Malbec, traditionally what you're getting is like these dark, deep, stewed fruits almost slightly abrasive uh, in a way, jammy, over the top. This is kind of the opposite side of the pendulum. This is a little bit more light, but it has a lot of those kind of great nuances that we associate with Malbec, but not clouded by the alcohol. So here like wild cherries, raspberries, slightly smoky, but not from oak, a little tobacco. I think it's sophistication really kind of works well with the dish. There's lots of complex flavors here, lots of things going on. The rule for me is I always err on the side of caution. Once you the wine is too heavy or too big for the dish, there's like no going back. Like you can't really enjoy it together. But this is great. This feels more uplifting, complements those favors. It's not heavy, but it, like it all finished clean. And I feel like, you know, I can be ready for the next bite. I like this combo. It, I think it's great. But this is where all the fun comes in is that you can tweak and, and choose different wines. Like ultimately what would be a fun thing for me is to have six different wines here. It's not a sprint to find like the best wine that you could ever find. It's all about being experimental and being being open and trying different things, right? Like, cause you know, variety is the spice of life. So next up, Little Caesars Pizza, pepperoni. I can smell the cheese, so kind of like there's some burnt cheese. The big thing I smell is pepperoni, the kind of spiciness, the meatiness of it. So here we're gonna do a little Barolo, which is actually known as the king of all Italian wines. So this is Nebbiolo from the Piedmont region. So Barolo is an amazing, amazing wine. This is all 100% Nebbiolo. You can even look at the wine. The wine seems almost brickish in color. That means that the wine has some maturity to it. So it is old. So that's gonna lend a little bit more complexity to it. All told signs for like Nebbiolo is tar, rose petal, wild berries. I feel like what's interesting about using a wine like this that's pretty complex for something that's just simple, you know, dough, cheese, and pepperoni meat on it. It's just kind of a cool kind of contrast. I think it just enhances the straightforward flavors of just having a pizza and make it makes it a little bit more exciting. But this is always a fun combo. You know, you have the saltiness and of the pizza. This is kind of a really weird pairing. Like Barolo is really, really expensive. It is called a king of wine for a reason. I think this is kind of the ultimate pizza wine. So even if it was like, you know, the most upscale pizza. But this is this is a beautiful pairing. I feel like comparing the high with the low is like a really kind of fun contrast and a really great thing to kind of play with when doing something like a food and wine pairing. I recommend this. All right, so uh, next up is uh, Panda Express. This is orange chicken, noodles, fried rice, and egg rolls. I have never ever had this before in my life. Not overly sweet, not cloying, but like good flavor, like seasoned well. There's a little bit of like that kind of chili flakes in it, bringing a little bit of heat. From that, I, I kind of know where to go. So for me, I would select 
you know, a Gewürztraminer, a dry Gewürztraminer, meaning that the wine is not sweet. Gewürztraminer is a grape. Gewürz means spicy. Traminer is like the base grape, so it's a spicy Traminer. They're just talking to like floral spice. This wine sees a little bit of time on the skins, collecting color, and when we pour it, it'll be kind of orange-y. We're having an orange wine with orange chicken. Wow, this is like tangerine. There's ginger, lychee. It's a very lean, low acid. This is bone dry, which is really kind of works well with the sweetness of the chicken here and the heat. To have an orange wine with your orange chicken, I pulled it off. You're damn straight, I pulled it off. We're at Dunkin' Donuts, and this is a sausage, egg, and cheese biscuit. This is the American breakfast on a bun. So we have egg, and then we have cheese. Oh, that looks awesome. Sausage, and for me, generally, I'm a weird dude. I like to put jam on this. That's, I, no mayonnaise, no nothing, just like jam. Jam, like, to me, just kind of just ties it all together. Since I don't have any jam here, I pull a little pais out. This may be a grape that many people aren't familiar. It's a grape that's been cultivated in South America and actually migrated up through Mexico into Texas and also into California. It's electric raspberry color. Here I really get a lot of strawberry. This is like a light to medium body grape. This is really beautiful. Wow. You guys should fight over this wine when we leave. It's what we want here. We don't want something that would overpower the dish. We want something that's lean. We want something that's crisp and has acid. And then for me personally, I like that strawberry flavor that you get from using jam that's not overly sweet. And that kind of brings the, the dish to the pinnacle, in, at least for me. You should all try it. I think Subway is up next. This is the Italian big meaty and tasty. You have salty meat, you have lettuce that kind of give a little bit of texture. There's onions, tomatoes that give acid, there's cheese. For me, I would want to choose an Italian wine to go with this. Chianti. So it's one of the most classic and iconic Italian wines. Think about like the red sauce places, tomato sauce, those things that are really high in acid. We're matching the classics here today. Classic Italian sub. Classic Italian wine. So this is a light to medium body red wine. I'm getting lots of tart cherries, raspberries, oregano. Wine can really act as a seasoning agent. So something like oregano jumping out of this particular wine, in my mind, classically go on an Italian sub. So the things, the flavors are really starting to match up. I think you can't lose with this particular combo and Chianti's value driven and affordable. Why not do it? Oh man, I think I got a piece of paper. I got some paper here, but don't worry about it. This wine pairs perfect with the Subway wrapper. Ah, so next up, Burger King, the home of the Whopper. In this case, I believe this is an impossible Whopper. This is a plant-based meat with all the accoutrement of a Whopper. I'm gonna look at this plant-based burger in the same way that I would look at it as a traditional Whopper. It's cooked on the grill the same way, all the other flavors are the same. Instead of using something like a Cabernet, I wanted to go to the Rhone Valley. And so this is Syrah. This is from the Cote de Rhone. This is from France. Syrah is like this kind of meaty, peppery style wine that's really beautiful and expressive. And I thought that would pair really well with the smoke. And this is a great example about how the items are cooked can change the way that you pair wine with it. McDonald's burgers are cooked on a griddle, on a flat top, and that's something different versus this is done on a Charlboro grill, which leaves the grill marks. There's some smokiness to it. The burnt marks kind of leave a little bit more texture to it, and it's just done in a different way. And so for me, I think this wine can stand up to something with a little bit more umph to it. Uh, it always reminds me of like Lowry seasoning salt. Meaty, fleshy, white peppercorn, dried raspberries. Got really great mouthfeel. It's not really overpowering, but it's got really great mouthfeel, great tannins, medium finish. For all of you wondering, like, what does an Impossible Burger taste like? Tastes like a Whopper in this sense. Like, I feel like it has all the elements that, I don't know, I wanna say trick your brain, but like, this is a great parent. I think this is great. Even with a regular Whopper or Impossible Whopper, Syrah from the Rhone Valley, it's a great parent. And finally, my Happy Meal. So we have the filet of fish which is one of my favorites. I actually worked at the fish station, if you would, when I was 16 at McDonald's. So filet of fish profile, you get like this tartness from the tartar sauce, uh, this relish, so there's a little bit of sweetness to it. You have this fried fish product, so you have the little kind of crunchy exterior. Inside is very warm and moist. Flavor-wise, I think to most is probably the tartar sauce and the fish. You know, a little bit of that ocean, if you would. So my hack meal is why don't we elevate it and step our game up? So I want to add a little bit of Ocetra caviar here, little fish eggs to kind of bring everything over the top. It just makes it easier if we just dump it all on the top here like this. Yes, we're pairing with caviar and then ultimately to complete everything, a little bit of champagne here. This is a little Krug half bottle. This is kind of well above over the top. This is in a different stratosphere here. I feel slightly dirty by 
eating this. So this is what I'm gonna eat. So this is like toasty bread coming right out of the oven. I think uh, this is kind of contrast in flavors. Like generally speaking, when you think about pairing wine with caviar, the problem with that is that most white wines that you would pour with it or serve with it, they start to taste tinny. So generally most people's go-to is champagne where it has the bubbles that kind of offset that. This is so good. Oh, that's decadent, that's that's amazing. So this is our grand finale, and I guess really what it means to me, it's kind of a celebration of the history of my career, you know, from where I started to kind of where I ended up. It is definitely over the top, but I think also it's something that one should experience. It's, it's kind of funny in a, in a lot of different ways that you take something that is pedestrian as a filet of fish from McDonald's and putting one of the world's most expensive ingredients on it and enjoying it together. I had a great time today. Actually more fun than I really thought I was gonna have. Fast food and wine is worth it. You bet your sweet ass it's worth it. You ever see the girl that was at the, the Knicks game who was, she was like dipping her, uh, her chicken nuggets into her soda? Who does that? <laughs> you guys do that? Anybody here do that? You wanna try it? So, well, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. All right. <laughs>